Do you guys remember Ricky the Ruko? Well, let me introduce you to his little brother, the U11 Mini. <laughs> this drone has just recently... Oh, look out. Let's see if Ricky can sit there and watch us. Ricky wanted to remain involved during this entire video. <laughs> we were contacted again by Ruko, and they asked if we'd be interested in reviewing another drone that they added to their list. Well, hopefully, this drone and this review is no different than my previous experiences. So, without further ado, let's get this box open, and let's get this new drone unveiled. Unveiled? <laughs> this is the Ruko U11 Mini Drone. Remember, this is not a toy. Or is it? <laughs> I'm confused. I was looking on the box, and one part of the box says this. It says, this electronic aircraft is not a toy. It says it right there in black and white. And then on the very next column, it says, this toy is recommended for children 14 years of age and older. I'm not really sure how to proceed here. All right, let's see what's in the case here. So first of all, we got the drone. The drone is, is of course, a Mini. It's, it's the same, I guess, size and, and shape almost as the DJI Mini 2. Does that not remind you of the DJI Mini 2, but just in black form? Of course, you got the gimbal cover right here that you can take off. Well, this being a Mini drone, it weighs less than 250 grams, so you don't have to worry about registration and things with the FAA as long as you're just flying recreational. Okay, so you got your drone, and inside the drone is a battery already. I guess you can't check it, or maybe it's dead. Oh, it says that it's full. Oh, it says it's got three dots. Put this aside for now. This is the controller. The controller feels like it's got some pretty good weight to it. It feels like it's made pretty well. You pull this out, you put your phone in here. Now this drone, the U11 Mini, is more comparable, I guess, to the original F11 Mini that Ruko released like last year or year before. They've definitely made one obvious improvement between the U11 and the older version of the F11. On the controller, the older, the old controller used to use like a Wi-Fi based communication between the phone and the controller. Well now, they've implemented the cable so you can directly connect your phone into the controller just like DJI does so you have a better feed between the phone and the controller so that's a definitely a step up all right let's put the controller back and we'll see what else is in this box so here we've got I think this is another battery Probably, yep I just ripped the box may not always rip these boxes yep you get a second battery I'll throw that down there and then here's another box of goodies here so this box is trash <laughs> All right, so it looks like you get some extra sticks and you get some propellers and some cables. I've been looking at Ruku's Amazon store and trying to find out the different features that this drone actually has. I'm telling you what, it's pretty loaded for a drone this size. It's of course got the return to home feature, which is nice, but it's got things like follow mode. It's got waypoints. I think they call them something else. I think they call it route planning. It's also got a uh, thing called gesture mode, which I've never used gesture mode ever in a drone. So we may try that out to see what it's like. Anyway, the technology that they built into this for their landing abilities, could we be seeing some precision landing possibly from this drone? That might be a good thing to test. But for this little sub 250 drone to have all those features is pretty impressive. Ruko knows what they're doing. If you remember when we took Ricky out for his maiden voyage, we had a lot of wind that day and he had some trouble coping with that wind. So I'm hoping that we can find a nice, calm, breezeless day to test out this drone, which we haven't named yet. Do you think you're going to be able to hold your position when you're hovering? One of the features that I'm not really so sold on yet, as far as this drone goes, is the camera itself. This is supposed to be a 4K camera. When I took it out of the box originally, I noticed the camera was really rigid. You see how it doesn't seem to have any movement in the gimbal? Well, <laughs> that's because there's no gimbal. I contacted Ruko because I thought maybe there was some packaging material or something for shipping purposes that I was missing that was inside. Well, I got a reply really quickly, and they told me that there is no gimbal, this is just a single axis camera that can only be moved up and down like that. <laughs> I did follow up with another email asking them if they're looking into or if they're willing to put gimbals on these smaller drones. And they said that based on their customer feedback and the responses that they've received, they're definitely looking into it for future models. So we may see an, a Z11. I'm not sure what the next letter would be, <laughs> but we may see another future model drone um, the mini drone that they've got come out with a gimbal, which would be really cool. Well, guys, I'm looking forward to taking this U11 mini out for its maiden voyage. So I think it's time I need to get back in the house, get the batteries charged up. I've also got to download the U11 or the Ruko U11 Fly app. So wish me luck. Next time that you see me, we'll be on the road to go to our spot. Well guys, it's the next morning, it's about 7.57, and it's already 81 degrees. 
So I got up early so I could get out here and do this flight today and not die in the heat. But we had a lot of rain last night and it's really, really muggy right now. I have a feeling I'm gonna get my feet wet. <laughs> got the batteries all charged up last night using the Ruco R299 power station. That worked out great. So the question is, is what are we gonna test today? Well, I'm gonna put this drone up into a signal test. I wanna see if I can maybe go a thousand feet or so from the home point. It says it'll go 9,800 feet. There ain't no way I'm gonna test that. I'm also not sure of the stability, so I'm gonna to try to do a little bit of a stability test also. And of course, we've gotta do a return to home test. And then maybe if we have time, we'll try out some of the smart features like the follow, image follow, and we'll see what else they've got. I think I'm gonna save gesture mode for another video though. We found it didn't pass it. And there's nobody here. That's awesome. So we can fly, we can raise the drone up above the trees here and not have to get our feet wet. My sunglasses fog up, I can't see a thing. <laughs> Do you guys remember this spot? I wonder if that R is for Roberts. I don't think we have any family buried here. Let's get walking back to the truck so we can get this drone up in the air. One cool thing about this drone is this is the setup. It's all in this box and this phone. That's it. It's very easy to carry everything that you need to the spot that you're going. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to fly today was because there was no breeze, there was no wind. It was nice and cool this morning. But I get here and the wind started to pick up just a little bit. So hopefully it's not enough to interfere with this little baby, small mini drone. <laughs> Look how small it is. I've got an RID module on top of it. One thing that was weird was the other day when I was putting this battery in here, I accidentally turned the battery on while it was outside of the drone. So let's see if that happens again. Let me turn this battery on. I just hold the button down like that and the lights come on. You see how the battery's on? And if I put it into the drone, what is going to happen? It turns the drone on. That's crazy. So I'm going to turn the battery back off. <laughs> Here's the controller. I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to get the phone connected to it. One thing I have noticed is I've got to take the phone out of the case because there's not too much room. What the problem is, is that this cord won't plug into the bottom of the phone when it's in the case. I've never had that problem before. So this cord may be a little bit shorter or the, the attachment may be a little bit shorter than normal, but it looks the same. It's the same lightning style cable. I'm going to get this drone away from the truck so we can get everything turned on. And we can first of all test its stability and see how it goes when it or how it does when it first lifts up. What the instructions tell you to do is they tell you to turn the drone on first. So I'm going to do that. And then turn on the controller. And all you got to do is just hold the button down one time. Now for the next 60 to 90 seconds, it's going to try to find or try to connect with the drone. So the controller's got to find the drone. So in the meantime, I'm going to turn the app on and see if we can get connected here. Again, this is the Ruco U11 app. When you first turn the app on, it wants you to trust the phone. It says, trust this computer, so you gotta hit trust. And then it takes you to this screen. I'm just gonna sit here and wait for it to connect. And that, it's connected. It does that one long beep and it's connected. What have we got here? I'm gonna go to controls, maybe? And it's not connected to the FPV. Oh, there it is. The FPV feed is there. All right, so this is what you see out of the drone. It actually looks like a pretty decent picture on the phone itself. Again, like I was saying before, the camera isn't, doesn't have a gimbal. So the picture is probably not gonna be that great on the video, but again, I don't wanna count it out before, we're, before, we're, uh, before we tested it. So let me go through some of these controls on the, on the flight screen here. So up in the upper right-hand corner is the three dots. So you touch that. Now, whenever you first install this app, it'll put you in beginner mode. So you've gotta change, you gotta dis, or unselect the beginner mode and you, and you gotta adjust your, your heights and your distances and things like that. So I've adjusted to max flight distance, which is 9,800 feet. We're not, again, gonna test that. And the max, or the, the flight height, I've got it set at 393 feet. You can't go above that, that's as high as it goes. Return to home altitude, let's see how high you can get that. Okay, you can get that to 393 feet also. I've only got it set to 100, and, or I only had it set to 120-ish. So let me go back down to 130. I don't think we need it that high, but I'm gonna do it. And then what you do is you hit save and it's set successfully. So another thing that it asks for you to do before you start your flight is it wants you to calibrate the compass. So I'm gonna hit calibration and it's telling me to turn the drone sideways or twist it sideways. I think you gotta do it three or four times. I can't read what those words are there, but it'll, it'll beep when it's ready and then it says go vertical, just like any other compass calibration with any other drone that you got. But it wants you to do this every time before you fly. 
Now it wants me to set it on a level surface so it can do the gyroscope, I think is what it's called. <laughs> And we've got 18 satellites. I think we're set. I think we're, I think we're ready to fly. It says you can launch two ways. You can pull the sticks down and in like normal, or you can use the launch button up here on the screen. So I'm going to use the launch button on the screen. I'm just going to hit take off. That doesn't do anything. So I'm going to hit the launch screen again. I'm going to slide to start the motors. <laughs> and then I'm going to take off. And there it is. Where is it raising up to? It isn't raising up too high. That is really stable, honestly. Let's get the GoPro in here, get a little closer look to this. That looks pretty good. Look at that. It's pretty stable, isn't it? Hello. <laughs> I'm gonna put the camera back down, so we're gonna do a real stabiliza stabilization test here. I just wanna push on it and see if it's gonna keep its position. It seems like it's keeping its position. It's not too bad, pretty stable. Now this doesn't have uh, obstacle avoidance or anything like that, there's no sensors, but it does have the underneath sensor, so if you put your hand down underneath it like that, it'll raise up into the air to avoid your hand. So there we go. So that works. So let me go ahead, I, I feel comfortable, let me, let me push it forward and see how it responds to the controls. The controls seem pretty good. It seems like it's pretty responsive. Let's turn around and look at us. It kind of drifted to the right a little bit. I hope that the uh, remote ID module isn't messing with the, any of the inner workings of this drone because that'd be a shame. Because you don't have to have this registered with the FAA as long as you're flying recreationally. Of course, this is not a recreational flight, so I had to put a remote ID module on it and I had to get it registered. So let's go back a little, little ways here. Let's record this. Hi, drone that's not named yet. How are you? I'm going to raise this sucker up. We're going to go up about 100 feet, and uh, we're going to see how it holds. Even though this is a single axis gimbal, it doesn't seem like it's too shaky, but I know as soon as, well, it is pretty shaky. <laughs> I know as soon as I take off, it's going to probably be facing the ground. So I want to pull the, ca the camera up as high as it'll go. That way, when it moves forward, it'll uh, have something to look at other than, you know, just the, the ground. All right, so right now we're allegedly six feet away from the home point. So I'm just going to go straight forward. And keep my eyes on it. And uh, we're in normal mode. There's three modes. There's Cine, normal, and sport mode. And right now we're in normal mode. I've got it barely, I'm barely pushing the stick right here. You can see. But the, the footage doesn't seem too awful bad at this point. So we're a couple hundred feet out. And the drone is still tracking straight. Still tracking true. It's got that pond in its sights, I think. We're almost 500 feet out. I'm going to turn to the right just a little bit because, you know. <laughs> How's the signal? I wasn't even looking at the signal. The signal up top looks pretty good. It looks like we got a full bar of signal here. We're almost 800 feet away. I magically can still see the drone pretty easily. And we're gonna fly over here to this. We're almost a thousand feet away already and we have no loss of signal. That's great. Yep, I'm almost, I'm 1150 feet out, almost 1200 feet out. I can still see the drone. I'm kind of surprised I can still see the drone because the Mini is a little bit more difficult to see. I think maybe because it's dark, because this is a black drone. But yeah, not bad. Looks like the height, looks like he's a little bit lower, <laughs> at least in the screen anyway, than he was when he took off. So I'm going to raise him up a little bit more. That wasn't bad. That's 1,500 feet. So let's hit return to home. We got a pretty good gust of wind here, so this isn't good. Let me hit return to home here. I'm going to slide to return to home. Return home. We're going to see if he turns around or if he comes backwards. We had a drone one time that whenever it returned to home, it came back straight backwards. Uh, and it was kind of strange. So I want to pull the gimbal up so we can see the see the sky or see the horizon. And he's still raising up, I think. He raises up really slow. He's at 126 feet. How high did we raise him up? I don't remember how what we had him set at. All right, so he's at, I guess he's at the, the return to home height. I've got the gimbal up as far as it'll go. He's coming back flying. How fast is he going? 27.3 six feet per second. I don't know what that calculates in as far as miles per hour, but it seems like it's pretty fast. And he's coming back to us, which is good. I've kind of, there he is. I lost him in the sky for a second, but I found him right away. All right, he's coming back at us. He's maintaining now at 33 feet per second. I'm gonna calculate that and show you guys what that is in miles per hour. Let me get the, the GoPro up so we can see him. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the uh, 
the GoPro on him. There he is. I'm going to keep the GoPro on him, but I'm also going to keep the controller in my left hand. And I'm going to cancel the return to home if it doesn't work out so well. All right, so he's right above us right now. I think the gimbal will come down 90 degrees. I can pull it down 90 degrees. So how close is he to this home point? I can't hear what, what, he, what she said. She has a, a different kind of voice. <laughs> I got the volume turned up as high as it'll go too, but it wasn't really very loud. All right, so he is coming down for a landing and he's steady. He's a little bit off. <laughs> I would say he's, he's a pretty good distance off, but you know what? That's not bad. I don't think that's a bad, a bad landing at all. Let's see how, how hard he hits the ground. Very smooth landing. Guys, that's only like four or five feet away. I would say that this drone flies really well and the return to home feature is not bad. All right, well, I've got him back on a landing pad. So I'm gonna hit, the, in the bottom left, there's this straight lines with the play button. I'm gonna hit that. And this is all of your smart features. I'm not gonna test all those things out. The only thing that I really wanna test out today is image follow. Let me hit image follow and see what happens. Under the adequate light circumstances, keep the distance of aircraft from human body within three to 10 meters, moving slowly at the same speed. All right, I'm gonna cancel that because I think I've gotta have him up in the air in order, to do, in order to do this. So let's get him started again. I think it's a he. <laughs> I just pinched the sticks together that time and, and I'm gonna raise him up. We'll see if we uh, have any problems with the distance and things like that registering if I do it that way. All right, so I think he's got his bearings now. I'm gonna turn him towards me and it said three to 10 meters, right? So let me back up just a little bit. There, I think we're about three meters away. <laughs> that's, that's about 10 feet, right? Okay, I'm gonna hit that button again. I'm gonna go to image follow and I'm gonna slide to the right to start. Is there something that it's gonna lock onto? It's not following an image here. Okay, that's not working. Let's do this, let's cancel that. I think you got to hit the image follow again. And we'll go to GPS follow. I wonder if that's going to mess the... I wonder if he's going to run into anything. GPS follow. Slide to start. GPS follow. <laughs> Slide to start. All right, so now he's following the controller. I think. Let's see if he'll follow me down the road, just a straight path. How do you like my shirt? <laughs> he's following me okay. Yeah, he is. Or he's following the controller, I should say. That's working pretty good. What else can we test, buddy? Let's do this again. There you go. Yeah, you are stable. I should have probably done that on the first stabilization test. <laughs> Not bad. The footage on the phone doesn't seem bad. It's, it's definitely, it doesn't have the gimbal, so obviously it's not stable. But the coloring and everything seems pretty good. I'm anxious to see what it looks like on the SD card itself because it's going to be better. There you go. Now you're lined up. Let's get you landed. Well, almost. You're halfway there. He's almost on the pad, but that was me, not him. Guys, I got to be honest. I wasn't expecting this flight to go as well as it did. Now, again, this drone's probably not going to be for everybody. I do know that it's going to be for beginners, and it's also for people that want to take photos photos rather than videos. But for this to be the first flight and for it to, to seem as easy and seamless as it was, I'm pretty impressed, Ruko. You did a really good job with this drone. If you're interested in learning more about this drone or if it's right for you, there's going to be a link in the description. Just make sure that you click on that. It'll take you straight to their store, and it'll show you what kind of deals they've got. I think what we did today by just testing the signal, the return to home, and one of those smart features, I think we left ourselves open to maybe a follow-up video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about a follow-up video for the U11 Mini. The one thing I'm looking forward to in a future model of this is, of course, the gimbal on this camera. If you put a gimbal on this camera, this thing could be a contender. All right, guys. Well, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. God bless.